It sounds as if the NIH is primarily, Francis, a clearinghouse where grants are given, scientific proposals are heard before a team of experts. Does the NIH do some actual research itself? Yes, I'm glad you asked. So about 10 or 11% of the budget uh, goes to what's called the intramural program. And that's about 5,000 doctoral level scientists who run research labs um, and also are coordinating their efforts with the largest research hospital in the world, which is the NIH Clinical Center uh, located in Bethesda, Maryland. Patients come to that clinical center for whom medical practice really does not have a solution. And they're there oftentimes uh, with a sense that this is their last hope of finding an answer. And those clinical trials that go on in the clinical center are everything from cancer to rare genetic diseases to mental health challenges, you name it. And that has been the place where an awful lot of major advances have happened clinically, including such things as the first development of chemotherapy for leukemia and more recently cures for sickle cell disease and a whole lot of other things in between. So that is also a really critical part of the NIH portfolio of activities, but it's somewhat different than the grants program, which goes out to all those universities across the country. But importantly, when you hear about a breakthrough in medical research that ends up uh, on the front page, maybe even above the fold, it's highly likely if it was a US investigation that it was funded by NIH, but people may not realize that. They think, oh, that university paid for it. Well, no, the university provided the the resources in terms of buildings and lab space, but the funds for the research for such things as cancer or diabetes or heart disease or a rare genetic disease almost certainly came from NIH. 